Hi guys, it's Jesse here. I'm so excited to be continuing our month all about bread. And today I want to bring you your favorite mall pretzel. Yes, I'm talking about those soft pretzels that you get from Auntie Anne's. And yes, there are a ton of flavors, but today I want to focus on one and that is garlic Parmesan. The first thing I want to do is take the bowl of my stand mixer and I'm going to add one tablespoon of active dry yeast. And it goes right into the bowl. The next thing I want to add is one tablespoon of brown sugar and it goes right in. And then I put some water in the microwave to heat it up to about 110 degrees. I just want to pour in one fourth of a cup of water. Okay, just a fourth of it. So I'm going to measure that out. And that is going to go directly into our yeast and into our brown sugar. I'm going to take my whisk. I apologize, I know it's kind of loud. And I'm just going to whisk this together. And I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. Okay, while I'm waiting on that mixture to sit for five minutes and to get frothy and let that yeast activate, I'm just going to take two cookie sheets and I'm going to line them with parchment paper. I know it's parchment paper, but we're also going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. And I like to use avocado oil. There we go. You can already smell the yeast and that is a very good sign. That means it is active. My temperature wasn't too hot. I didn't kill it. Yeah, it already smells like bread in here. and I'm so excited. Now it's been five minutes and it has foamed up and gotten super frothy and puffy. Let me show you. We're going to add the rest of our water, which was one and a fourth cups, a teaspoon of salt, Now we're going to add our flour. I'm going to be using four cups of all-purpose flour and one cup of whole wheat flour. I just really like the mix of the wheat when I'm baking uh, with yeast. I don't know. I've just noticed that it just does better. There's more protein, I guess. So there's one. And so I try to incorporate wheat into all my recipes, and it might be a different amount each time. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Two. Three, four, and we're going to add the fifth cup. It's going to be whole wheat, and this will be five. I want to give this a really good mix, and I just changed to a spatula because I knew it would get caught up in the whisk, and we don't want that. I'm not trying to overcomplicate the process or make it you know, worse or difficult, or to make my cleanup any worse. No, no thank you. So I'm going to get this all combined. And it is a little bit dry, but that's because we are about to add our butter. You can see, I mean, it's, it's pretty dry. It's a drier dough. Okay. But I've got all of that flour combined and incorporated. Now what I want to do is put it in my stand mixer. I'm going to move this over here so you can see better. And I went ahead and got my bread hooks on and I'm just going to put them down. And on low speed, I'm going to add my four tablespoons of melted butter. Now that the butter is incorporated, I'm just going to make sure scrape down, whoop, scrape down all the sides. Looks good. Now we are going to knead this on a medium speed, and for me, that's a two. I'm going to knead it for about seven minutes. Okay, it has been seven minutes and our dough is looking fabulous. I want to show you. Now here comes the fun part. 
Let me move my mixer out of the way. I have a clean work surface. So I'm gonna take my dough out and it's a very substantial dough. And I wanna divide it into 10 equal portions. So I'm taking my bench scraper and I think the way that I wanna do this is I wanna kinda roll the whole thing into a log. So that I can get 10 portions out of it. Okay. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to cut it in half. Okay. And then I'm going to, oh, that's okay. I'm going to cut that in half again. Okay, and then I'm going to cut that in half again, and I'm going to cut that in half again. Um, I don't know what I just did, but I didn't do it right. <laughs> okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I need 10. That's okay. We're doing this together, okay? There should be about, they should be about 100 grams each. So why don't we weigh them? Okay, he has too much. And then we can form our other ones. And I know this is gonna take me a second. Okay, this one's perfect. Okay, he's close enough. So see, in my leftover dough, I'm already getting there. Perfect. Okay, and I should have enough dough here that it should produce me two more. I have a little extra dough. So you know what? We're just going to go back and add a little extra dough to everybody. And that way, they'll all be even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What I want to do is I'm going to take my dough, right? Got them all back together. And I want to roll him and just apply a little pressure until he comes out to be like an 18 to 20 inch long log snake. I don't know what you would call it, right? We just add a little pressure and draw our hands like this. Okay, and he's already bouncing back on me because that's the yeast, right? Okay, and that looks perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him on my cookie sheet. I'm gonna make a U. And then I'm going to fold back and I'm going to pull them over themselves and do a twist and then connect. Just like that. I actually moved you down here where you could see better. So watch my hands. I'm gonna get the dough together, right? And then I'm gonna start rolling it. I'm just applying pressure while I move my hands out, just like that. All right, and that helps us keep the dough even. I'm starting from the thickest point and I'm going to about 18, 20 inches. Okay, and then when I look like I've got it there, I'm going to do this for you to see. I'm going to make a U shape, and then I'm going to bring over this, and I'm going to twist them over each other, and then I'm going to pinch them back to the bottom to connect. And there we have our pretzel. I'm going to do one more. Honestly, you guys, I love the soft pretzels at the mall. And that's the only place I get them. 
And I've had the crunchy pretzels. I'm not a huge fan of crunchy pretzels. I just don't like them. But Snyder's makes an amazing pretzel. I love the mustard flavored. I like the spicy ones, but they make a great crunchy pretzel. Most of the time pretzels are bland. They just taste like salt and cardboard. If I'm being honest, they're salt and cardboard. But like I said, Snyder's knows what they're doing and they're, they have a sweetness to them. And then of course they have a ton of different flavors, but their texture is perfect. Their flavor is perfect. But if I have to choose a pretzel, a favorite pretzel of all time, it would be Auntie Anne's soft pretzels. So that is why we are here today. To make food that we love, right? And this is so much fun. It's almost like an arts and crafts project that you're gonna be able to eat. All right, so I just finished rolling out all 10 of my pretzels and I wanna cover them and let them sit and rise for 30 minutes with a clean dish towel. And while they're rising, I'm going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees. And I'm also gonna get my baking soda water bath ready for them. So let me show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat 400 degrees and let that be getting hot. And then I have 10 cups of cold water and I'm just gonna turn this on high. Just because it takes my pot a long time to boil, it's this specific pot. Anyway, 10 cups of water, turn it on high heat. I wanna bring it to a boil and I have two thirds of a cup of baking soda that I'm gonna add and mix in. And this is gonna be our baking soda bath for our pretzels before we bake them. So I've added my baking soda to my water. It's ready to go. And our pretzels have puffed up. And what I wanna do is take the pretzel and put it in here for 30 seconds on each side. And I think I can fit two in here at one time, just like that. And as soon as the 30 seconds is over, I'm gonna flip them over and let them do 30 seconds on the other side. Okay, now they're ready to flip. So I'm gonna carefully give them a flip. And this, I am having to be super careful. And we're gonna let him go for 30 more seconds on this side. Then I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna put them back onto my baking sheet and I'm gonna repeat this process. Okay, I have all of the pretzels boiled in the soda water, put on cooking sheets, and they're going into the 400 degree oven to bake. While we're waiting on our pretzels to bake, we are going to make our garlic Parmesan sauce. This is gonna be what we put or we brush on top of the finished pretzels. So I'm gonna take four, one, two, three, four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I'm gonna put it straight into a little bitty saucepan. To our butter, let me turn the heat down a little bit. I wanna add one whole tablespoon of garlic powder. And yes, it's a lot, but we want our pretzels to have that amazing garlic flavor. And I wanna mix this up because I do not want that to burn. I need to turn that heat way down. I'm gonna remove it for the, from the heat for a second. To this, I'm going to add two teaspoons of parsley flake. This just gives it that beautiful color. Those specks of green on the pretzel are just pretty. And then about a teaspoon of coarse sea salt. Just like that and give that a really good mix, okay? I'm gonna take a fourth of a cup of parm and add it into our garlic butter mixture. 
just like that. And then we will add another fourth of a cup sprinkle on top of the Parmesan cheese. This smells amazing, by the way. Um, okay, pretzel person. Oh my word. These look amazing. They smell amazing. I still have two more pans in the oven. I'm letting them get a little more brown. All these are hot. I want to brush them with my garlic sauce. With my garlic butter. Oh my goodness. Like, I just can't. I have to show you this up close. This is amazing. And they smell amazing. To make sure I get this garlic Parmesan butter in every nook and cranny. All right, I'm just going to check on the other one. Oh, they look good. He is definitely done. I'm going to move him onto this one. I think these two need a little bit more on top. The time you're cooking, you do, um, you rotate like that. Okay, and those look pretty good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and brush my garlic butter on these. Remember, I'm just warming that garlic butter back up. I am doing a final sprinkling of parm after I brush it with the garlic butter. It adds these beautiful white flakes. Y'all, these are insane. Okay, you guys, I have all the pretzels brushed with a garlic Parmesan parsley mixture and butter, and I sprinkled them with a little extra Parmesan cheese, and I am ready to taste. And I know it's hot, and this little guy struggled with the shape. I think he was one of my first ones to make. So I want to taste him because he's not super pretty, so I don't want to give him away. So good. So good. I want to sprinkle a little more sauce on top. Let me do that. I said I think it needs more salt, but the more I started to chew and think, I thought it needs sweetness. So I took four more tablespoons of butter, put two tablespoons of honey in it, and brushed them. That is the secret. That is what's going to take these pretzels over the top. And I know you might be thinking, butter and honey with garlic and Parmesan? Um, it works. I'm just telling you, it works. The pretzel needed some sweetness, and this is the perfect balance of that. And it doesn't cover up the flavor of the garlic or the Parmesan. It doesn't do anything but enhance it. It makes it taste even better. So do not have any fear of adding this honey butter. Because it's a game changer. And honestly, before I added it, I was not happy with my pretzels. I was not super happy. And this makes me happy. Now it's a pretzel that I'm proud to make and serve and that I'm proud to give you. So all of these changes are reflected in the recipe that you're now looking at. I hope you stick around and check out some more great recipes on my blog.